Hey guys, welcome. Today we're going to go over some important valuation ratios. It's going to help us sift through stocks and look for what we think are undervalued stocks. It's kind of like going to the store and looking for something that's on a great sale. Hey guys, I want to do a quick shout out to my favorite discount broker, Interactive Brokers. Um, I just got my Barons last week and they won, I think, for the fifth time best online broker. And I've tried almost all of them and I really do think they have the best trading software. And once you open an account, it's 100% um, free. It's called the TWS Workstation. Um, great charts, great fundamentals. You can trade directly from the charts. You can add stop and target orders. Um, you can get a hold of somebody if you have a question uh, via phone or by doing a ticket. Um, just a great all around experience. Um, so I would recommend them. Um, I put a link below to help us both if you wanna give them a try, but um, they really do do a good job. Only downside, they don't have branches. So if you're the kind of person that wants to go into a branch and talk to someone, it's not gonna be great for that. But as far as like the, the trading software, the prices and the executions, um, very happy with that. Link below, check it out. Okay, so the first ratio we're gonna talk about is the price to earnings ratio, often referred to as the PE ratio. The price to earnings slash PE ratio relates a company's share price to its earnings per share. So it's a simple ratio. It is simply the share price divided by the earnings per share. So let me give you an example. Company A, the share price is $100 per share. And that particular company earned $10 per share over the last year. So this would have a trailing PE ratio of the 100 divided by 10 or 10. So that in of itself doesn't really tell you much, but we may want to compare it to another company, Company B. Now this comp company, preferably in the same industry with a similar growth rate, has the same stock price, $100 per share. But in this case, their trailing earnings are $5 a share. So you would take the five divided by the 100, and that would be a PE of 20, uh, a trailing PE of 20. So if we had no other information at all, and we were just looking at these two companies, company A has a price to earnings ratio of 10, and company B a price to earnings ratio of 20, or basically paying twice as much for company B. And assuming there aren't any other extenuating factors that make company B so much more desirable, company A is clearly the better value. Also important to note are there are two kinds of PE ratios both forward and trailing PE ratios. So when you're evaluating a company, you might wanna look at both of those numbers. In some cases, they might be consistently the same, but if there are business circumstances that cause a company's earnings to go up and down, or even something crazy like a plant fire or a new blockbuster drug, a company's PE ratio could change from year to year. So you might wanna look at both of those before making that decision to invest in the company. So here's a couple other things to note about the P.E. ratio. Um, high P.E. ratio on a stock could mean that the stock is overvalued. It also could be that investors are expecting high growth rates in the future. But at very least, if it's an extremely high P.E., you're probably in a more speculative investment. Now, you'll also see a number of companies when you're evaluating stocks that have no P.E. So in this case, it's a company that does not have any earnings or is losing money. Now again, it could be a stock that's investing in the future. At one time for many years, Amazon was losing money. So it could still be a stock that would make you a lot of money, but you definitely wanna have some caution here and you're definitely looking at a more speculative investment than a company with a low PE and tried and true earnings growth. So some final thoughts on the PE ratio. As a general rule, uh, the P, a lower PE ratio is better given all other things equal. Um, the P.E. ratio is best uh, used uh, when, can, when comparing similar companies and in similar industries with somewhat similar growth rates. That's where it's going to be most effective. You can also compare P.E. ratio to an index, say like the S&P 500. Um, if the S&P 500 had, an, say, a P.E. ratio of 25 and a company that you're looking at has a P.E. ratio of 15, you could safely say that the company you're considering is cheaper than the S&P 500. Um, if you see it, if you're evaluating a stock and it has no PE or just as NA under the PE section, 
Uh, that is going to be a note of caution. That probably means that this company is not making money. Um, so that would be a, a one red flag. Another good thing about um, this ratio and on the other ones we're going to be talking about, they're already going to be calculated for you. Whenever you click on a ticker or type in a ticker online, you will see um, PE listed. So don't be afraid of the math. I just wanted to show you how the, the PE ratio is calculated. And um, finally, uh, although it's not a perfect ratio, it's not a perfect tool, it is one of the important valuation tools. And personally, I would not um, consider buying a stock without at least knowing what the PE ratio is. The next ratio we're going to talk about, uh, also an important valuation ratio, is the PEG ratio. The PEG ratio incorporates the PE ratio, but it also accounts for a company's uh, expected earnings growth. Uh, the definition of how it's calculated is simply the PE ratio divided by the company's expected earnings growth rate. So let's go back to company A and B from segment one. If you remember, company A um, had a PE ratio of 10. Now, if we calculate the PEG ratio of this company, we're going to assume that that company has an expected earnings growth rate of 5% a year, or that their earnings will go up 5% every year. So we take that PE ratio that we calculated before, which was 10, and on the denominator at the bottom, we put the 5% uh, earnings growth expectation. And the 10 divided by 5 comes out to 2. So company A in this case um, has a PEG ratio of 2. Now, company B, which had a higher PE ratio, if, as you recall, it had a PE ratio of 20. But this particular company has, we're going to assume, has an expected growth rate of 20% a year. So it's a very fast growing company. So if we uh, take that into account, we take the PE ratio again at the top, or the numerator is going to be uh, 20. And on the denominator, we put the earnings growth expectation rate, which is 20%. So in this case, the PEG ratio would be uh, 20 divided by 20, or 1. So a PEG ratio of 1. So as you can see, whereas company A had a lower valuation um, based on PE ratio alone, when we incorporate the earnings growth, um, assuming those numbers are correct, in this case, uh, company B has a lower PEG ratio. Um, or makes it look more valuable because of the earnings growth. Remember, that's what you're really paying for when you buy a stock is future earnings growth. So this is why it's good to look at both of these ratios. Now, if the earnings growth were the same or similar, then um, you would obviously want to stick with company A because it has cheaper valuations. But in this case, you might want to consider, do I want to go with a higher PE company because it has a higher growth rate and a lower PEG ratio? So these are both important ratios to consider. So using the PE and the PEG ratio in conjunction um, is a good start on um, considering a company's valuation, especially when used, again, with other similar companies and in similar industries. So please look at both of these ratios as part of your uh, stock evaluation. Okay, there's one other ratio I want to go over real quickly. Uh, it's also good to look at. It's um, called the debt to equity ratio. And um, very simply, this is calculated by putting a company's uh, total uh, debt on the numerator and shareholder equity or basically the value of the company on the denominator. So the higher this number is, it kind of shows the more leveraged a company is. Um, just to go back to our example of um, company A again, um, that was the low PE kind of slow growing company. So let's uh, say that they have a um, total shareholder equity or value of about two million dollars and um, they have a total liabilities or debt of $1 million. So you divide that out, one divided by two, and that's a um, debt to equity ratio of 0.5. So in this case, that would be considered a conservative debt to equity ratio. Um, even if there's like a recession or a rising interest rate environment, they would probably, since they have 2 million in assets and only 1 million in liabilities, they're gonna be able to pay that money back. The company is not gonna go bankrupt. And so now let's go back and look at a company B, which remember had a higher PE ratio, but was growing quicker at about 20% a year and a low PEG ratio. So let's assume this company had the same um, $2 million in uh, total assets, but they have uh, $6 million in liabilities. 
So that would mean they have a debt to equity ratio of three. Now this can be a little bit more common in a fast growing company because they can figure they can borrow money and um, employ it. And with the way their company's growing, they're gonna be able to grow faster and easily pay the money back. But where it becomes a little more risky is if um, something changes in the business environment or there's a rising interest rate environment or a recession. Then in that kind of a case, if that company couldn't continue their growth, they would owe basically three times their um, assets and they might have a difficult time paying that back and could even potentially go bankrupt. So uh, again, that one had a um, debt to equity ratio of three, whereas our first company only had a debt to equity ratio of 0.5. So um, this is another thing to consider. A higher debt to equity ratio means that it's a more leveraged company. Again, it may be okay if it's a fast growing company and they can continue to grow their business and pay them back. Um, but also it could be a little bit of a red flag, especially as it gets up to like four to five times um, that you are taking a little bit more risk with your investment. So if you kind of look at these three ratios, the two valuation ratios and PE and PEG, and then the debt to equity ratio, you can kind of see what a value investor might look for, which would be low PE and PEG and a relatively low debt to equity ratio. So hopefully this has been helpful. Um, please consult your advisor, do your own research. This is not a recommendation for any stocks, but a, just kind of a way to start your education and research into the subject of value investing.